Hello, my name is Nathan Barnett, former gravedigger from spooky old New England, now living in Los Angeles, and you're listening to Grave Stories. I'm back. It's happening. Welcome back to the traditional form, the original form of Grave Stories, where I read spooky, real, true ghost stories from real people and or news articles documenting spooky things. I've had a few iterations of this podcast where I tried doing some investigative videos on YouTube, but I find it's more fun for me to just read real ghost stories and do it as an audio podcast. I think I might throw this on YouTube as well, put some video footage over uh, because I often listen to podcasts on YouTube. Uh, It's kind of the the website I use the most, so I'll probably throw it up there for those who do prefer YouTube, but this will also go on Spotify and uh, or Apple and all that stuff if I can figure out how to log into the Grave Stories account because I will say I have a big gripe. I have a big complaint with Spotify and Anchor where I used to load these podcasts. I used to load the podcast on a website named Anchor, titled Anchor, called Anchor, whatever. Anchor doesn't exist anymore because Spotify bought it and it has screwed up my login. Now, when I go to log into Anchor, this is stuff that you probably don't care about, but this is what I'm about to deal with when I try to upload this uh, this episode. I log into Anchor and it brings you, it forces you into Spotify. And then when I log into Spotify, it logs into my personal Nathan account, not my Grave Stories podcast account. That I can't, I think that account doesn't exist anymore. So I don't want to start a whole new page. I want these new episodes to go up alongside the old episodes under the same channel. Well, I don't know if that's possible, and I'm pretty upset about it. So that's what I'm dealing with right now, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to figure it out, and I'll put them online, and I'll put them up at least on YouTube for the time being, but it would be nice to get these on the traditional podcast platforms. So anyway, I'm back, and if you would like this and you want to see more of this, please, I'll even beg you, support on Patreon. That's the best way to keep me making things in general. Spotify uh, doesn't pay anything. YouTube ad revenue doesn't really pay anything. Uh, The best way to support, if you like these and you want to hear more, if you want to be like a weekly thing, I think I used to do it as a monthly thing, but I could do it as much as weekly, monthly, bi-monthly, bi-weekly. If there's more support and people are interested, then I'll definitely do it because that's how I stay alive. So anyways, support on Patreon if you're able to or become a YouTube member of one of the YouTube channels. That's a good way to support. And if you do that, by the way, I should say this. Here's a bonus you can get. Uh, You can get into the members-only Discord. You can get into the Discord without being a member. There is a room everyone can chat in, but all the other rooms, the 95% of the rooms in the Discord are for people who spend $5 or more on a membership on YouTube or Patreon. And you can then get into the Minecraft server where I play Minecraft almost every single day with everybody. I love it. I stream in that Minecraft server. A bunch of you have probably seen it. So if you want to get in there and play Minecraft with me, hang out in the Discord, become a $5 member, and you'll keep this podcast going. Sorry, I hate doing commercials. I hate promoting my my ways of sort of staying alive, but I got to do it. So anyways, let's, let's, get, let's get going. I'm going to read a couple of news articles about some spooky things these might be a little bit too dark Uh, i think i'll go back i think for the second half i like to do uh the commercial breaks and i like to you know do two sections of this of every episode so i'll read some news articles uh i i pre-read them and they're a bit dark and i don't know if it's gonna be too depressing (laughs) so we'll go to some ghost stories after uh after we read these news articles so sit back and relax enjoy this commercial break and i'll be right back Take a break. I want to play in the rain and take a break. Seven up so cool and clear. Yeah, it feels as good as the rain is out here. Gotta take a break. I want to play in the rain and take a break. Get the sun coming down. Now you could win a year's worth of free travel on United Airlines. Plus $25,000. Look for the seven up play all day game. Seven up. Wow, what a great commercial. I can't believe they're one of my sponsors. How amazing. A legendary commercial like that, and they're sponsoring me for zero dollars and zero cents. I'm so fortunate to have such great ads. I will say those commercial breaks are probably my favorite part of these episodes. So hope you enjoyed that. There'll be another one coming up. Now let's get to the first story. Uh, This is titled Issy the Cannibal. This is a real story. This is a news article. 
that I read, and uh, it's pretty interesting, spooky, demented, horrifying, depressing. It's a little bit of everything. So uh, here it goes. Issy the Cannibal. I think the name is Issy. I-S-S-E-I. Uh, it's a Japanese man's name, I'm pretty sure. Okay, here we go. In 1974, 24-year-old Waco University student Issy Sagawa allegedly followed a German woman to her home in Tokyo, Japan, broke into her apartment while she was sleeping, and attempted to cut a piece of flesh off her body to consume. When she awoke, she reportedly fought him, and he was later captured by the police. According to a 2012 Vice documentary that covered Issy's bizarre story, he was mistakenly charged with attempted rape and his wealthy father paid the victim a settlement outside of court to have the charges dropped. Seven years later, in 1981, hey, that's the year I was born, spooky, he allegedly committed a murder in France, shooting and eating a fellow university student, René Hartevelt. Issy creepily documented the entire experience with photographs and he was captured by authorities once again while attempting to dump the rest of her body in the Bois de Boulange lake. For reasons unknown, his psychologists in Japan declared that he was sane. Furthermore, a legal technicality involving the French government refusing to turn over the documents from his case meant that his murder charges were dropped completely. What? you that oh my god this guy freaking got lucky he checked himself out of the mental hospital and has reportedly been walking the streets as a free man ever since oh my god this is scary the guy's still out there issy has even become a controversial celebrity writing over 20 books oh, come on rewarding this guy this guy murdered someone that poor person who's dead now. Now this guy's like getting rich off of it. This is so messed up. According to Japan Today, he most recently fantasized about an unnamed TV actress saying, I'll catch a glimpse of her thigh and think that sure looks tasty, but I don't feel like I actually want to eat it. As I accomplished the act of cannibalism once, there's no meaning to maintaining the desire for it anymore. In my book, I wrote that it was tasty. And this is, he's referring to the human flesh. But that was not really true. I'd much rather eat beef. But because I desired to consume human flesh for so long, I'd managed to convince myself that it would necessarily be delicious. Issy Sagawa was also referenced in the Rolling Stones song, Too Much Blood, with the lyrics reading, and when he ate her, he took her bones to the Bois de Boulange. He is currently 73 years old and continues to live in Kawaski City, Japan. To this day, no one knows why France did not allow Japan to give him a trial. Jeez, man. That's crazy. That is pretty interesting. Also horrible and morbid. He almost... He, pro he possibly could have killed that lady that he was, he was trying to eat her leg. And he definitely killed that other college student and got away with it. So messed up. That's insane. Japan, you dinguses, you blew it. Uh, wow. All right, let's get into another one. This one is titled Florida Devil Worshipping. Friends noticed that Danielle Harkins, a 35-year-old school teacher near St. Petersburg, Florida, started acting strangely in June of 2012, developing an interest in demonic rituals. Soon after, she was arrested for abuse of seven of her former students, as the Tampa Bay Times reported. Danielle Harkins told the kids they needed to rid their bodies of demons as the group gathered before dusk Saturday around a small fire near the St. Petersburg Pier. They should cut their skin to let the evil spirits out, police said, she told the children. Then they needed to burn the wounds to ensure that those spirits would not return. When Harkins held a lighter to one of the teens' hand, wind blew the flame out, police said. That prompted her to douse his hand in perfume before setting it on fire. The boy suffered second-degree burns, police said. My God. Another teen was cut on the neck with a broken bottle, police said. Harkins used a flame to heat a small key, which she then used to cauterize the wound. This lady's nuts. Either this lady's crazy and just wants to hurt these kids, or she really think believes these things. How random, though, using a key... To it seems like she's just using things she has on her. She's like, oh, your hand won't stay on fire. Uh, I got perfume. She's just pulling things out of her purse, bringing perfume. Oh, now we'll use my key to car. Like these kids must have been like, this is a janky ritual lady. You don't even have like the proper cult devices. Where's the crystals? Where's the pentagrams? 
just using her freaking Ford Focus car keys. The police were notified because a friend of one of the students who participated in the ritual raised alarms. However, none of the students themselves told their parents about the event or would comment following the arrest of Harkins for aggravated battery and child abuse. So the kids, they didn't, they probably liked the lady. They probably, they probably were like a bunch of goth cult people. Oh my God, it sounds like someone I know. By the way, join my Discord, The Paradise Loop. It's actually a cult, but it's a fun one. We just play Minecraft. Get in there. All right, continuing on, the end of this, it says, Investigators said they'd spoken to Harkins, but she didn't spell out what type of religion would require such drastic measures. She hasn't informed us exactly what she was trying to accomplish with this, the detective of the St. Petersburg Police Department said. Okay, so a teacher was just ch taking former students to the park and burning them and saying, yeah, this is how you get the demons out. They probably all had crushes on her. She's probably just a hot teacher. Dumb teens will do whatever a hot teacher says. Ay, ay, ay. Wow. Wild stuff going on out there, everybody. Jeez Louise. All right. Well, we're going to take a break. We're going to get into some ghost stories now. Those are news articles of demented things happening on this planet. Stick around. We'll be right back. Good morning. Burger King presents Breakfast to Go. Yeah, to go. Chris Sandwich. To go. French Toast Sticks. To go. Breakfast to go. Burger King, the best food for fast time. Welcome back. Time for a ghost story from a real person. This is a story from the book titled Real Ghost Stories by Tony and Jenny Bruski. So this is a story they collected from a person and we're going to see how it goes. These, this is more of the tr what I normally read uh, on this podcast is the best book I've ever read is Nantucket Ghosts. And it just, it just feels so believable. So not like scripted, written, doesn't have like the perfect story beats you'd find in a traditional fictional story. Um, some books are better than others. That, I base everything off of that Nantucket Ghost book, which the, are the early episodes of this podcast. And man, they're just so good and so very believable, not over the top. Uh, this is a brand new book. I've never read anything from it. Um, some books are better than others. Hopefully this one uh, is pretty good. This one, I scammed, skimmed this one, and they, they talk about Nintendo 64 in it, which I love. And I actually, so oh, that's weird. I have four, five Nintendo 64 games right in front of me. Wave Race, Doom 64, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, Blast Corps, and WWF No Mercy. Oh, and Excitebike 64. Interesting. Here, here listen to the games. That's the clacking of the plastic cartridges. I love that sound. Uh, anyways, here, let's get into the story. This story is titled Face in the Mirror. I tend to be skeptical about the paranormal. This is not because I don't believe that unexplainable things happen but because most of the time what people experience can be explained by other means. I should also mention that I've always been very intuitive. I don't consider myself psychic or sensitive by any means. I don't see dead people and I don't talk to ghosts. My gift, if you can call it that, generally has more to do with the living than the dead. I intuitively know how people are feeling, even when they try to hide it. And nine times out of 10, I can see through deception also, ever since I was a child, I've been able to detect the presence of evil. I grew up in a Christian home, and fortunately for me, my mother always believed me when I said I thought there was something bad or evil around. She always encouraged me and told me that God was stronger than any evil in the world, and that as long as I put my trust in him, I would be okay. Be warned, if you already have an aversion to mirrors, especially in the middle of the night, you may not want to read any further. Oh, thank you for the warning. First of all, is that a thing? Who's afraid of mirrors? I've never heard that. I guess it's a thing. There's a fear of everything, but all right. And especially mirrors at night. Oh, obviously. Literally anything at night is scarier because the night is scary. So while anyone listening, you might want to tune out. Fortunately for me, I'm not afraid of mirrors or mirrors at night. So I'm going to continue. 
It was midsummer in southeast Missouri. School was out and a friend invited me to stay the night while his parents were out of town. I was hesitant at first because I didn't know the guy very well. Okay, <laughs> you're a teenager. And this guy says that his parents are out of town and he wants you to stay over. Well, I didn't know him very well, so I was hesitant. But ultimately, I said, sure, why not? This doesn't sound believable to me at all right away. <laughs> but we'll see where it's going. Sometimes I feel that some stories are fabricated and written and they try to add real life sounding details to make it feel more believable, but then it just sort of like messes up the credibility of the whole story because it's just too much information that you just just doesn't feel natural. Anyway, whatever. I don't mean to be a hater. I like all the stories. I believe them for the most part. Also, you never know. Some people might want to make it a lot more elaborate and flesh out the story, make it feel like more of a, a piece of some, literature, when really the story could probably be told in two sentences. Went to a guy's house, saw a face in the mirror. Whole oh boy, it was scary. <laughs> That's pretty much, probably pretty much all this story is going to be. We had a few classes together at school, and we were both video game nerds, so we had at least that much in common. He was kind of a social outcast, not by any fault of his own. He was skinny and quiet and awkward, the kind of kid that the cool kids at school liked to pick on. Needless to say, he didn't have many friends, but I liked him well enough. I wasn't exactly a social butterfly in high school either, so I could relate. Ultimately, I didn't have anything better to do, and he had a brand new Nintendo 64 and the new Star Fox game, so it was kind of a no-brainer. My friend lived in a trailer park that had only been recently developed, and the parents had purchased the trailer they lived in, new. Almost as soon as I had entered the trailer, an alarm went off in the back of my mind, and I knew that something was off. There was something about the trailer that initially gave me the creeps. The windows were all covered with tinfoil. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think anyone who walks in any room and the whole thing is covered in tinfoil, you might not want to stick around. That person's probably a bit crazy. Conspiracy theorists. This kid's parents are probably think the government's recording their brain waves. Oh boy, this is now getting interesting. Making the inside of the trailer as dark as night, even in the middle of day. I thought maybe that's where the feeling was coming from. You, you think? <laughs> Looking back, I wish I had listened to that alarm in my mind. <laughs> oh, well, this person got eaten. But I didn't want to be rude. I ignored the feeling, pushing it as far away from my thoughts as I could. His parents had left him some money, so we ordered pizza and enjoyed the new game for most of the evening. We were sitting in his room where the TV and Nintendo 64 were hooked up. We were joking around, and at one point, I grabbed a stuffed lion from the bookshelf in his room and threw it at him playfully. He caught it and placed it on his bed. Later that night, he remembered that the rabbits his father kept as pets outside needed to be fed. We went outside to feed them, and when we came back into his room, the lion was back on the shelf where it had been before I threw it. I found that somewhat odd, because I left the room after he did, and I would have seen if he had put it back on the shelf. As I said before, we were the only ones there that night. I asked him about it, and that's when things started to get weird. He said, oh, I didn't tell you? I have another friend who lives here with me. He says he's a ghost, but he's not mean or scary or anything. <laughs> what? I laughed at him. I wasn't trying to be mean or hurtful, but I couldn't help it. I didn't believe in ghosts. If he was offended, he didn't show it. He only went on to tell me how the ghost would do small things for him, such as turning off the light if he didn't feel like getting up. Like I said before, I didn't know him very well, and I thought that maybe he was just messing with me, so I let it go. A few hours later, we put on a movie he had rented. I had a sleeping bag on the floor, and he was in his bed. It was well past midnight by then, and it wasn't long before we both fell asleep. I woke up at some point during the night to use the bathroom. The bathroom was just around the corner from his bedroom. I flipped the light switch when I entered the bathroom, but the light only came on very dimly. This was right around the time that early fluorescent light bulbs were becoming more popular, so I assumed that the lights in the bathroom might be that kind and take a minute or so to warm up. I relieved myself and turned to wash my hands in the sink, and that's when I felt it. It seems so cliche to say it, but there's no other way to describe the feeling. Someone was watching me. 
Not only that, it was as if the temperature were dropping rapidly in the room. A chill came over me, and the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I knew all of these feelings well. They were how I always felt when evil was present. I turned on the water and had to bend over slightly because the sink was so low. Perhaps if my adrenaline hadn't already started to flow from the creepy feeling that filled the room, I may not have noticed that my image in the mirror didn't follow me. I froze. For a moment, I couldn't bring myself to move. I thought that maybe if I just stood there with the water running over my hands, it might wake me up and bring me back to my senses. It didn't. I bent further and splashed some water on my face. That didn't work either. It took a moment, but I eventually mustered my courage and looked up. At first, the face looking back at me was my own, and I would have thought it was all just in my head if the image had followed my movements, but it didn't. As I watched, the face began to change. I've always been on the heavy side, and my face reflects that. I watched as the round features began to take on new, sharper ones that were not my own. The eyes changed too. I can't really describe how they changed except to say they became deeper, not cavernous or dark, but somehow older and filled with the kind of depth that you might expect to see in the eyes of an old war veteran. What? <laughs> how does a war, war veteran have a, a type of eye? bags under their eyes bullet holes <laughs> in the face i wanted to look away i wanted to close my eyes and count to 10. maybe then the image would be gone but i was transfixed it was as if someone was holding my head in place so i couldn't turn away then it spoke he doesn't need you he has me and i'm all he needs a familiar alarm went off in my mind again oh yeah, that familiar alarm when a face in the mirror that isn't your own talks to you. Yeah, I think we all get that alarm. It's, what the heck is going on? I am possessed and I need to leave. Oh, yeah, because you have abilities, you can tell when something's off. This is the craziest thing anyone on earth has ever seen. Everyone would have the same alarm going off. As I said before, I'm better than most at detecting deception. Oh, yeah, because if we all saw this face, we would go, oh, all right. It's just me saying that to myself. And I knew in that moment that whatever this thing in the mirror was, it was lying to me. <laughs> Who cares what it's saying to you? If it's lying or telling the truth, get the heck out of there. My fear slowly began to give way to anger. As the pieces came together in my mind, the thing in the mirror was a predator. My friend was an extraordinarily lonely person. He was a loner, a socially awkward teenager who related more to video games than real people. And apart from me, he had no real friends. This thing had used that loneliness to attach itself to him and it had convinced him that he was just a friendly ghost who meant no harm. The ghost is probably a loser too, and you're cr encroaching on their friendship time. He doesn't need you around. Don't you think that maybe the ghost is like a lonely person too, and now you're just being mean to the ghost? This person is bullying the ghost. I don't, I don't side with this person. It began to speak again. Something about how it would never hurt him, that it was a good friend to him, but I cut it off. Oh, so you just rude to this ghost trying to tell you about its sensitive side i know what you are i said this this man or woman is a karen to the ghost but i cut it off i know what you are i said it was something that i was thinking and didn't really mean to say it but when i did it stopped talking you can't lie to me i said more boldly this time I had never had to deal with a demon before, but in that moment, I knew exactly what was in the mirror in front of me. In that moment, I remembered the scripture my mother always used to quote to me when I was afraid. It was from 1 John chapter 4. When I thought about that verse, any fear that remained was swept away, and I was left with only anger at what this thing was doing to my friend. I know what you are, I repeated, and as long as I'm here, you can't be here. The face in the mirror began to change again, and this time, the image wasn't something I recognized. It certainly wasn't human. All the features faded into deep, impenetrable shadows, until all that remained were those deep, ancient eyes. It still had a face and a torso, but they were so dark that they seemed to suck in all the light around them. 
you can't make me leave the thing hissed at me. Maybe not, but I speak with the authority of Christ. The spirit of the living God dwells in me and he has authority over all things. Even you, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to leave this place and never return. As soon as those words left my lips, I opened my eyes and I was back in my sleeping bag on the floor in my friend's room. Oh, (laughs) so you were dreaming. (laughs) Okay, well, so much for that. (laughs) I never went back to that friend's house. (laughs) We remained friends, but from that point on, I insisted that we stay at my house. Now I know what you're thinking. This was a creepy story, but it was all just a dream. Oh, yeah. I wonder why you're thinking that. We are thinking this. I have a vivid imagination and just made the whole thing up in my mind. I would have thought so too if that were the end of the story, but it wasn't. Oh my God, you guys, there's more. All right, let's see. Let's see if I'll be a true believer at the end of this. I want to be a believer. I love ghosts. Ghosts are freaking tight. I want this to be real. Let's see. I dealt with that same spirit on at least two other occasions. I wonder how many of the ghost stories that people write and call in about are demonic in nature. I know what my friend firmly believed that the entity with whom he was communicating was completely harmless. He legitimately thought it was simply another lonely spirit and that together they were meeting a need that they mutually shared. The reality was that for whatever reason, a demonic spirit had attached itself to him. Who knows how badly that could have ended if it had continued. Uh, okay, so you didn't convince me that it wasn't a dream. Basically, this person said, now I know what you're thinking. The insane stuff I just said sounds like it was in a dream because I was laying in a sleeping bag and I woke up. But it wasn't a dream because it wasn't. <laughs> That's basically their their rebuttal. All right, well... That was interesting. It was a fun one. The thing is, I like when they're very much like this person on this date in this city, in this state. And they give you like the story of the weird stuff. And it's like, oh, that's creepy. That's kind of cool. But this was like a whole story. It just seems sometimes they seem a little fabricated or I don't know, embellished. That was interesting, though. It's definitely entertaining. I didn't I didn't hate it. It was called Face in the Mirror. And that is from the book that Tony and Jenny Bruski uh, have written where they gather real stories from real people. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Another episode of Grave Stories from a Grave Digger. Me, I'm a former grave digger and now I'm reading spooky real life stories. Thanks for listening. If you want more of this, I'll beg you to support on Patreon. A dollar, two dollars, three, four, five. Five will get you in to the Minecraft server and into the members-only rooms of the Discord. Join the Discord, chat in the free room, but please, listen to more episodes. Thanks for being here. Goodbye.